Welcome, my friends. This is Maniacal Incorporated continuing on with my Saints and Scholars run, also known as Just the Tip, because I'm using the Tip Volume 2 mod, which has given us lots of new counties in Ireland, lots and lots of new counties to raid and conquer. At the end of the last episode, we managed to bring the Loch Lane into Munster. They accepted vassalization quite wisely. On a raid of Ossery, we captured... Now this is going to be confusing. Our brother-in-law's son. So not our sister's son, our sister's stepson. And we conquered Ossery just about. The forces of the High King, Aed, are still wandering around. Uh, still hanging around there. So we managed to conquer Osri, and we installed Chieftain Dermid, who we had in our prisons for a while. I didn't realize this until afterwards. We killed his father, who was Kurul Macdunlana's brother. Uh, but we killed him in one of the battles. I think it was the uh, the battle where where we broke their forces that were sieging down uh, Port Lariga, and then they retreated back, and they came back down and then we just barely just barely managed to out siege them so our forces are pretty badly beaten at the moment we're going to have to spend some time uh, allowing them to recuperate we have a couple of different options if we wanted to push for the high kingship uh, Leinster Leon uh, Kildara and Connacht would give us the um, the areas that we need our other option, however, and this is what I think that we might do. I said about the strong connections between uh, Munster, Leinster, and Wales. There is actually a, a spate of ohm stones running in a line in kind of this direction. So throughout Munster, uh, Munster is very heavily populated with ohm stones, and they're also present in Wales. There are stories called the expulsion of the Dacia of um, tribes in Ireland being expelled, leaving Leinster and travelling and settling in Wales. So there's lots of ancient connections, and I spoke about how I wanted to go and at least visit Wales. Well, down here in David, we can see that just a few weeks ago, if I can find it, in October, so during the dramatic events in Port Lariga and Ossery, the Vikings landed in Wales and they have established a beachhead. Now, they are not in a great position at the moment. So what we might do is try and get our forces up and mount a liberation. Yes, we're going to liberate this area. And of course, that will give us a foothold in Wales. And if we can get our army numbers up even further, possibly that will open up Wales and England to us for raiding because we're we're starting to get limited uh, on the island of Ireland and it would be fantastic to have all of this lovely area to raid if we had an army big enough to do so. In the last episode I also gave the position of Chancellor to Kubraka of Loch Lane and we have another powerful vassal demanding a council position, the 15 Marshal uh, Diarmid, the new chieftain of Ossery, basically our puppet ruler of Ossery. And what we're going to do is, it looks like, I'm going to fire my marshal, who is also a 15, and replace him with Diarmid. So we will appoint a new marshal, we will assign, and we're at least keeping the vassals happy. That's the most important thing. Also in the last episode, we were notified that our brother-in-law, Philip the Stammerer had died, and that our sister was just married off instantaneously to the son of the Duke of Neustria. Well, we tried to sway him. It wasn't going very well. He didn't like us. He didn't like us at all. He died, and now the much more favourable, Gausbert, uh, has come to the, the throne. Our brother-in-law is now the Duke of Neustria, and I sent a an alliance proposal to him at the end of the last episode which it looks like he's going to accept. So, in a few seconds, we should get a little pop-up telling us that Goosebert is now our buddy. There you go. 
He's honoured by our request and would be glad to call us an ally. So I think his father had about 100 troops more. Um, but yeah, that's not too bad an alliance and it might call us into events on the continent. And actually, the very last thing is our buddy, Captain Maul Shocknail. He was taken prisoner, I think, in one of the first engagements that we fought against Osri when they hired some mercenaries. Um, we can't ransom him to himself because he's got no money. He spent it all betting on cards with the rats in the prison. I don't know how he's lost it all. Um, so yeah, we're just going to gain a week hook in him, negotiate his release, and uh, he'll wander away off. We could have executed Maul Shocknail. I don't think it's our style, though. Uh, we see Viking just pop up there in Alba. So more Viking adventurers are pushing into areas. That's a substantial. That's a lot of counties. Um, well, it's actually two duchies and a lot of counties. So we've gotten a lifestyle perk as well, and um, like I said, we're not we're not the type to just randomly execute our prisoners because we're a scholar and a theologian. Scholarly circles, what will that do for us? Learning per devotion. Well, we are trying to get our we are trying to get our piety up, so I think we'll go for that. Although we need the prestige, we need another just under 400 prestige to add Tanistry Elective to Munster. Our army at max capacity is 1,200, could challenge anyone on the island, but we are a bit weak at the moment. So some of our neighbours, they're not too bad. Well, we're, uh, we're not much ahead of them. So I think what we're going to have to do is... Add to our light footman. So we're going to increase the size to two. And I might very well come back and increase the bowman as well. Short enough. So we're gonna we're gonna let that new unit set itself up. We're gonna wait for our numbers to come up a bit more in September. Our need to zoom in a bit. Our palisade is gonna be constructed. Just a couple of months, and what I'm probably going to do at that stage is gathering holes. So we'll get some extra levies, uh, control growth, and prestige. So we could just go straight for the war camps, which would give us um, 150 levies and an extra knight. Heavy infantry, you see we don't have a lot of, of heavy infantry. Um, I think for the prestige growth. We'll go for gathering holes. So it's just another couple of weeks. And what are we seeing here? I think we're seeing an invasion. Brunswick. How the hell do they have enough troops to, uh, to siege that place down? Let's see what's going on here. So here is the Count of Brunswick. We're going to have a new neighbour. It looks like we're lucky we didn't marry... We didn't marry our kid off to the son of whoever the hell he's at war with um attacking oh it's a liberty war so this isn't uh, this isn't an actual conquest okay all the same we'd be dragged into that if we had formed an alliance our palisade is finished and we will go for gathering holes perfect Our court physician, Dovdal Kriach, comes to us with a poorly translated medical text. If I were to follow these instructions, I am as likely to cure my patient as I am to kill them outright. Now, the Irish at this time period would have been famous for their translations and their ability to, to translate and for their scholarship in Latin and Greek. So this is quite fitting. We'll have a look. We'll have a look. That will give us a 73% chance to gain 300... I think he will gain that. No, we'll gain 300 learning lifestyle. And Dovdal Kriok will increase his learning by 2, which would be fantastic for our physician. That is if we are successful. And we are. 
So it looks like our dream of taking this foothold in Wales is coming to an end because uh, David is being attacked by Gwened in a holy war. However, there is still this region that's also under Norse control. They have a substantially larger army, however, and they have some strong allies as well. So if we were to attempt this, we would pretty much need to guarantee that Neustria is not currently in a war, and that it is in a position... where the hell is it? That it's in a position to help us. Hmm. I think between all of our allies, we might be able, if we could get them all in, we might be able to take Rogaland. We're going to let it tick over into the start of the next month. And I think we'll pretty much have to declare war. And so our brother-in-law agrees to join us with his 800 or so troops. We are putting our army under the King of Munster, as to be expected. Uh, the Vikings have called in their allies. So we're going to bring them in here and hopefully hit any army that they have around here before they can get up to capacity. Now, of course, we want to bring them in, uh, get rid of our sea legs. So we're not going to we're not going to attack while we still have that uh, that penalty, unless they don't have any troops. And of course, they actually have to bring their troops in from abroad as well. So we might actually begin the siege, and see if we can cause any chunk of damage uh, before any of the uh, the opposition shows up. We have a small numerical advantage. We also have all of our troops concentrated in one area. And they are no longer suffering penalties for landing by sea. So if the troops were to come in from Norway and land, hopefully they would suffer a penalty. If we come down and check how the siege is progressing. He can't fight to save his life, but damn it, that man knows how to throw rocks at a wall. Duokon has been put back in charge of the siege, or he's been put back in command of the army. The man who successfully out-sieged Karul Makdumlana. Well, he out-sieged his baby. And took Ossery before Port Lariga fell in the last war. Uh, we are suffering a chunk of attrition casualties now because our allies are dumped on top of us, but hopefully we can get this done soon. So as we try to remove one Norse power, we're going to marry into another. Here is our sister, who we married off earlier on to the brother of Kurul Makdondane. Uh, we killed him when we broke the siege of Port Lariga. Uh, we invited her back to our court. And now we're going to marry her off to the son of the slain King of Dublin, uh, Ulfur the White. He was slain by forces loyal to the, uh, the Count of Leinster before he was deposed. And he's actually in line to inherit Vesterland from his mother. So it's a, it's a kind of a powerful alliance between these two. I'm going to send off that proposal. There, in the last month of the siege, Bukon got an all-morseful wallop of a rock, uh, knocked off a big chunk of the wall, and uh, expanded the uh, the siege. And I was just about to address that when we got a pop-up that somebody is attempting to murder my wife, the High Chieftess, Bardov, who I threatened to divorce in the last episode. The villain behind this. We must stop them. And let's actually take a look at the siege in its final, its final few days. Uh, somebody else is after joining in against us. So have things become a bit worse? Oh, they have. It's another, I won't say it's a minor power in Norway. 
And we have an option. We have an option. It's likely at this stage that we're going to have to call in Ead, uh, call in the High King. Do we sit here and wait? Or do we take the fight to Norway? First thing we're going to do is call in Ead and see what he says. Right then. So we have summoned the High King. And... Uh, that doesn't look like the High King. The High King is a bit busy at the moment. Also, something major happened here. Did Jorvik... Ooh, I think Jorvik made Mercia disappear. That's not great for us. The High King is a bit busy. The High King is a bit busy. He's also a bit mad. Uh, he's currently just about winning a war against Brefni, but his armies have been depleted, so if we were to call him in, he would not be helping us right now. Instead, we've called in our brother-in-law's ma up here in Vesterland. So hopefully, that's 400 troops I think she has at her disposal. Look at them. What are they doing? I think we're going to hold on. We're going to see if this war score ticks up. It would be fantastic if we could get them to come for us. Unless, of course, they land in Ireland. Hmm. Oh, somebody's on the run. Okay, so we've had a bit of a development. Here is the chieftain of Rogaland. Here's his progress in the battle against me. Here is... Two more wars he's involved in. And this one is also for the region that we currently occupy. So these guys are now hostile towards us because they also want to take this region. I'm hoping that he calls in his allies who are allied against us. I hope he calls them in. I don't know what I hope. I'm just hoping basically for some Welsh body bags. Some Welsh guys that'll stand in front of me and take all the damage from the, the Norse if they arrive. The war score is ticking up slowly. And we can unlock a perk. Let's do that while we're waiting. Here comes the Icelandic forces and also, what perfect timing, here comes people that we're not hostile um, against. Here comes some people that we're actively at war against. If we have either a Catholic or a Norse pagan county coming under our control, now is probably the time to take Convert Faith in county speed. Doesn't make much of a difference, but we might as well unlock it. Buakon has been told to pack up his siege equipment. The army has been handed back to the King of Munster, and we are going to march. In this direction. Well, this is interesting. What timing? They're not following in. Oh, that could be disastrous for them. Says he, just as our sister dies. Ending our alliance with Neustria. Well, we'd, we'd better get as much use out of his soldiers as we possibly can. Um, are these... These are hostile armies, so they're now trying to actually siege down our territory. I think I might have gotten um, confused between all the different shades of red. Straight away, as news comes to us that our sister Sheila has died... While we have these forces uh, committed to helping us, I'm hoping that they're going to follow us in here. And the other Welsh forces are uh, meeting to join up with them. Our champion Anders was slain. I think we just barely have an advantage. More Welsh forces are trying to siege down the capital of the Viking territory. And we've just managed to drive them out. They're falling back. They know what's happening. And we are going to meet them. 
uh, if they if they don't get out to sea first of all they didn't we just about managed to catch them I will not tolerate anyone trying to take my counties boys oh boys and just for the hell of it in comes the final I'd be hoping at 93% I'd be hoping the final battle against the Norse. Just about. We have captured the son of our enemy. They have another force coming in. They didn't manage to mobilize all their troops uh, efficiently enough. And we are going to be able to... How do I end wars again? I've confused myself. So be it. The army has been stood down and sent home, but Cormac has been left behind to bring the religious institutions in line with the practices in Ireland. We had a series of four victories. If we take a quick look. Here's one of our former Neustrian allies. Sean was one of our better performers. Uh, Kubraka is still in there. Uh, Sean killed somebody. Somebody died from their wounds. So heavy casualties on that side. Here's poor Anders. And where is... It looks like uh, Cormac has actually been pushed out of our army list at the moment. I'm sure he was there urging us on. Uh, so here is June. They kind of get reordered when you dismiss one of them. Again, that Count, uh, Sean, Kubraka got himself wounded, the poor man. Uh, so Anders was still there, so he was still around for that fight. Uh, same old, same old. Uh, at this stage, I think we'd broken all of the armies that came against us. So yeah, that alliance with Neustria did a tremendous amount of work. Um, that was... This must have been the final battle in which that guy was actually killed. And Kubraka, I think he came away... No, he got himself wounded again, the poor man. He got himself wounded. An aggravated wound, an infected wound. He's in poor health. Yara, walk, walk it off. <clears throat> walk it off, Kubraka, walk it off. The 1st of January, 883, news reaches us that Brefni has fallen to Icelandic forces. And we see a continued Viking push into the island and into the region as a whole. Uh, Cornwall has completely fallen. And I think what we are going to have to do is we just about have the second strongest army on the island. Uh, we are markedly stronger than Dublin, but not markedly stronger than his uh, his overlord. We just about have an advantage over Kildare. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to raise our raiding army we're going to see where we can go on a tour of. It looks like Dublin is heading for Connacht. So I want to hit Arguilla, Balfiuk and Antrim anyway. And also these two churches here in Leinster. This one is uh, their actual um, settlement has no loot. So we're going to raid down Ireland. To again make sure everyone knows that we're still here. And then we're possibly going to look to doing an introductory raid of the bits of Wales that were strong enough to attack. And so after a quick visit to Leinster, we are able to cross across the country. We're going to march our army uh, through Dublin, past Kildare as a warning to all of them, through the lands of the High King. Uh, we can see here that Scotland is now attacking for Brefni. This will be interesting. So Alba has invaded. And we have just received news 
that our vassal, Kubreka, has died from his wounds, which he didn't men I told him to walk up to walk him off. So he's been replaced by his son. How is he as a as a knight? Oh wow. All boys. There's a madman. A madman with a sword. I'm gonna have to see what we're going to need to do here in terms of giving him a council position. Uh, I've actually given command of the army to Dearmid. And now we have two great martial figures fighting for that marshal's position. But Kubraka, what a servant he's been. He accepted vassalization. He has been a major contributor to all of our raiding armies. He's gotten wounded on pretty much every... Nobody should have given that man a sword. He got wounded on every single outing that he was on. And eventually there was just no more parts of him left to get aggravated wounds. We have a few people better than him, but not much better than him. So we have a, a 10 and two 11s. Do you know what? We as might as well put them on as our diplomat. If nothing else, it's going to make diplomacy very interesting. Having an adulterous lunatic with a sword. A holy warrior on top of it all. Boys, oh boys, here's an interesting, here is an interesting figure. This is somebody. If the Onoth Loch Lane were actually part of the Onoth, here is somebody I would think of uh, for the succession, but not, most certainly not, on a Saints and Scholars run. We have Siege Down Armagh again. We have just succeeded as Alba takes... Brefni, and I'm slightly confused because there is Alba, yet if we look at the shield, that shield looks a lot like the shield of Tyrconnell. Now this could be part of a major war, because I thought he was attacking. Oh no, he's attacking for Brefni. So this could actually be... Who the hell is attacking for Brefni? <laughs> yeah, so we have uh, Tyrconnell... The High King of Ireland, uh, the King of Alba, they're all attacking uh, for Icelandic Brefni. And we're attacking for gold. My spymaster has come to me with grave news. While we do not yet know who, someone is plotting to kill my champion, Dovlatna. Somebody is trying to change history. The man who should succeed us in five years' time, historically. Somebody's trying to kill him. I'll I'll worry about it later. I'll 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 forget about it. I'll totally forget about it. Uh, so the Dalfiach are coming to resist our attempts to take all their gold, and it's telling us that it's a, going to be an equal fight. I don't think they have any champions by the looks of it. They're throwing priests at us. Oka's doing almighty work. We overlooked him for the chancellor position. I bet he's furious. Now, they're going to be pushed into Scotland. Uh, we've been overwhelmed by stress. Some member of our family has died. Is that our mother has passed away. Our mother has died, hopefully not from her wounds that she got in battle. She died from a seizure. And so a man who I thought would never... He looks very young there. A man who I thought would never end up getting stressed is after becoming stressed to the gills. Sometimes I feel like the entire world rests upon my shoulders. My responsibilities as High Chieftain of Munster are endless. I hardly have a moment for myself. What's he going to do? Become a drunkard. Become irritable. Or declare that it is his duty. And we'll see if there is some other more holy way that we can reduce the stress on him. If we become a drunkard, it'll give us a permanent way of decreasing stress. I don't think irritability will give us a permanent way of decreasing stress, uh, but it will 
It'll affect our diplomacy and our martial. It will give us increased prowess. I don't think that really affects us. However, it will give us increased stress loss and dread gain. So I think he is, in his anger, he is becoming irritable, possibly forcing his religious devotion onto others. He is becoming angered by their lack of faith and devotion. I am surrounded by fools. Now our siege has finished there. We've captured the daughter-in-law of the ruler. We do still have a good strong army, but I think it might be. Yeah, it's time for us to head back home. Here's the outcome from that last battle against the Dalfiuk just before we sieged down Patrick. Uh, Sean again at the top. Um, Corcoran, Oka, got himself wounded. Uh oh, he has an aggravated wound. We remember what happened to the last person with a, an aggravated wound. Uh, he has eight prowess, so Dermot has eight prowess, and Daemon, who replaced his father, Kubraka, he has eight prowess. So at the moment he's just one position below Dermot, and um, we only have, I think, eight knight positions available. Seven. Seven knights. So, yeah, we're going to need to to do something to increase those, possibly a couple of buildings to, to get some more knights added. Now, this is a rather awkward development. Here is the daughter-in-law of the chieftain of the Dalfiach, but he will not ransom her. So I presume we send the ransom demand for this Anglo-Saxon daughter-in-law of a chieftain far to the north of our realms, who dare to challenge us. And the news comes back that he has refused, and he's plenty money. He has the money for it. War is wearing away at what little compassion is left to the King of Munster, he is overwhelmed by stress again from his hasty action. I really should have read all of the ramifications there. His hasty action in executing uh, the daughter of the ruler of Dalfiach. We've come into Ivonia. We've sieged down their lands. Now, I'm not too sure what's happening here. Kildara is coming in this direction. There is a Baba. And it does look like Kildare is attempting a conquest of Ivonia. We're going to use that as a temporary opportunity to siege down the capital. The Ivonia, what are they going to do? Are they going to... I shouldn't say the Ivonia. Um... What are... They're just waiting there at the moment because they know that they're in a bit of trouble. So there's Connock's forces. And I have some of my knights uh, pinned. And we've just been informed that one of our best knights, Kirkron has died under mysterious circumstances. This cannot be playing well on the king's mind. We are getting open declarations that a number of people close to us are being threatened. Uh, there is a plot to kill Dovlachna. There is a plot to kill our wife. But we knew nothing about this plot. And one of our great knights, uh, Kirkron, is dead. It's clear that we need somebody in our court who we can trust. We are going to contact Mogron, the deposed ruler of Ivonia, to arrange a marriage with his high intrigue daughter. And I think we will be instantaneously making her our primary wife. 
and devoting her to uh, intrigue matters. Poor old Bardov. After all she's done, she's given us three children, she served as our primary wife since the very beginning, she watched her lands being conquered by the squelch, her family deposed, and now we cast her aside for a young schemer to assist in court intrigue. And we have destruct schemes on. I think we'll um, we leave that as it is at the moment, and hopefully this should help to squash any other um, plots that might be happening in court. We can see that Kildara is just about to attack the armies of Connacht in their attempts to conquer, uh, conquer Ivonia, the homeland of our new wife. It'll be interesting to see how much of a baton Kildare can suffer here. Can they fall to a level low enough that we might be able to raid some of their lands? So we finished our siege. We've 61 gold, not too bad for our... 61 gold and a wife, not too bad. Now, we need to pause very quickly for a number of different reasons. Um, Bishop Cormac has become a symbol of God's infinite forgiveness. He's still out in Wales trying to convert him. Always ready to offer a helping hand in his fingerless gloves. You can just about see. He's got some weird fingerless gloves on. And an open mind to the wants and need. Cormac has been instrumental in keeping alive the insular precept that no one is truly innocent. Yeah, he's done this before. How commendable. How commendable. Right. Connacht is retreating into our path. They've been driven out by Kildara. And they are... Hmm. Okay, back we go. <laughs> we're just trying to avoid them. I think we're going to be dancing around them for a while. No, nope, we're not. And we're not in a position to attack uh, Kildare's land either. So for now, we're going to bring our forces back into Thuvuan. Probably stand them down. Let them recuperate some bit. And uh, see what we're going to do from there. So we didn't stand the troops down for very long, only a few months to let them recover a few numbers. Uh, Connacht went in against Kildare again. You can just see them there now. They're up to, or they're down to, 760 troops. We can see Meath is coming in, so possibly Meath is also looking to enforce its influence in the region. And actually, while Meath's army gets stuck raiding the churches in Beer. We're going to come around, and we're going to take Balyohluan, which has a good chunk of money, more than... Um, we were going to go for Trim, which we're going to take here instead. So that's quite handy. And it looks like Meath is withdrawing, so possibly we'll be in a position to take Trim as well. And we have... A lifestyle perk. Poor old Cormac has another four years in Wales. So we'll make ourselves a religious icon. And that might... I don't know if it actually will help him. It might just help him a small bit. I, I don't think it does uh, much for him. But um, hopefully he can get that converted. Well, in four years. So we all, we all, we all know this, don't we? I mean, nobody's, nobody's talking about it. We, we all know that the High King is insane, don't we? That Aeth is literally mad. He's a lunatic. He's, like, these words, these aren't even words. Oh, they are words. Oh, I thought he was just spouting gibberish. We will join somebody as a defender. So I'm not too sure what's going on here. I don't even know who, who owns that land. 
Okay, the Isle of Man is under the control of Mead. Don't know when that happened. Uh, we're being invited in. Of course, we're going to join Aid. Uh, joined us on a number of occasions. And, um... I think we're now at war with ourselves. Oh, wait, no, we're not. Jarl Sigdur Snake in the Eye has joined. There's a couple of big names joining. So I think what we're going to need to do is finish raiding. Get some money, because we might need it. We just get back to Osiri with 24 gold, 24 prestige. Uh, she was our kinswoman as well. I know we took her a prisoner and I was just about to go and... Uh, ransom her, but she has died from malnourishment in our dungeons. Somebody survived there. Dearmid was there for five years. You were there for like five months. And uh, she was the... Yeah, we married her to the to the son of... Or did we? I don't know. Well, there you go. Anyway, doesn't make much of a difference. Uh, we retreat back to Osri just to dump some money and bury a body. <clears throat> now let's see how this war stands. So this is what the battle lines look like. Doesn't look great at the moment. The Viking Alliance has doubled the amount of forces that Aeth has been able to put together. I hope he has a few more allies that he can call in. Uh, it looks like the Earldom of Meath was inherited by the previous Earl's daughter, and she uh, holy ward the Isle of Man successfully. So now we have to try and defend it for her. It's possible that I might need to spend some money to bring in mercenaries, because I don't know if Aeth has the alliances or not. We will check that in the next episode. Thank you very much for joining me on this one. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe, and you can check the links below or the description below for links to the Tip Volume 2 mod, which I am using for this playthrough, and for my Twitch and my uh, Twitter pages and all that good stuff. Thank you for joining me, and I will talk to you on the next one.